what's up YouTube John here thank you for joining blue carbon reefing just wanted to give you an update on the refugium and take some par readings of the refugium and the frag tank just so you guys have uh, an idea with adding the UFO lights what kind of an impact it had to the par um, took some par readings I will show you that here in just a few minutes but in the meantime wanted to give you an update on the catamorpha as you can see I have a ton of hair algae grown in here um, which I'm okay with at this point um, but the I had two different little handfuls of catamorpha the one kept floating so I basically broke it up into little pieces it's actually five little pieces now there's one actually hidden underneath this piece and then this other one um, which is a different type of catamorpha it's actually red light it does not look that brown it's got to be the red light um, originally was less than a handful and now has grown quite a bit so it's growing not uh, blown up because I believe I'll have to take a look at when I did the original video of adding this light but I'm gonna assume at least a couple weeks ago so the difference between this one, this one is uh, real thin, stringy, and it's kind of growing. And this one, as you can see, is real thick and really condensed ball. So that's why I had broken these up, because they do uh, float pretty well. And they kept going back towards the the overflow and getting stuck in here where they weren't really getting a whole lot of light plus I didn't want them to get stuck to overflow the tank so there you go seems like everything's kind of flocking in this direction but that's okay uh, the dragon's breath is not doing too well it is really breaking apart so, I have added iodine and iron, and I'm not sure why this isn't doing well, but this is pretty much all that's left is little pieces like this. The rest of it is just dissipating into nothing. So, some of the pieces, like this one feels hard, it's just getting transparent in the middle, and I'm wondering what I can do to make that grow but at the end of the day as long as some kind of macroalgae is growing over hair algae it's really what I'm looking for something that I can easily remove that doesn't make such a huge mess so the dragon's breath fails no big deal as long as something's growing so adding the light seems to be helping um, definitely So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what I did. I took the Senai sensor and kind of made a makeshift uh, three quarter inch PVC kind of holder and did some wire ties to hold everything together. Uh, I took some direct readings right under the lights, both the UFLO lights and the Kessel H380. Uh, I took some readings of the power levels right at the surface water. Uh, I did it directly at the sand bed under all three lights, um, under each light and kind of in each corner. Uh, I also did a quick kind of like what kind of light is this mangrove tree getting because the leaves are turning a little bit brown. So you'll see in later updates, I moved the tree a little bit farther out from directly under this light because I think it was just getting a little bit too much light uh, for its liking. So I'm going to show you the par ratings here, both before with just the Kessel H3D by itself. Each of these uh, pictures I'm going to show for about 10 seconds, so if you want to take a longer look, just pause the video here. So as you can see, 2200 par under the light directly, 350 in the middle right under the surface of the water, and about 100 par at the sand bed and barely anything, like 10 to 13 on the outer corners. As far as all three lights on 2200 par under the Kessel, only about 1200 under each of the UFO lights. I'm thinking the Kessel is a lot dense, uh, denser of a matrix uh, where all the lights are kind of grouped together, whereas the UFO light, it's kind of spread out a little bit more. It's probably a big difference why. Um, as far as 
um, at the surface of the water, 475, 450, 475, kind of depending where it is underneath the light. Um, right over the mangrove tree was actually about 300 par. And then at the sand bed, you're talking a good um, 200 par right in the middle where all three lights would be kind of overlapping and 100 par in the outer corners. So as I was staring at the refugium and seeing all this hair algae, it kind of got to me. So I decided to do some extra maintenance and try to clean up as much of the hair algae as I could. Um, I started by thinking to myself, well, what get rid of the water? I'm just going to save the water. So I started to kind of drain the water into a five gallon bucket through filter socks, kind of hoping that I would save the water that would be coming through um, and not necessarily um, be having to do a huge water change. So. Uh, after that point, I kind of got tired of um, going through the filter socks were clogging pretty quick and then I decided let's just kind of take a brush, scrape everything up uh, right off the plastic itself. I did go about three quarters of the way down or if you look at the tank itself, maybe about uh, it split into thirds, so maybe about two thirds of the way down uh, just so I didn't disturb the sand bed and uh, took a brush basically scrubbed everything, scrubbed the pump, scrubbed all the walls, um, and really just kind of uh, got everything as clean as I could. Uh, and then for her quite a while, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but uh, I basically took a net. Uh, I did put some filter shocks on the, uh, the outlets going through this um, tank right now. And that way I was kind of catching any detritus that kind of overflowed uh, out into the other tank. And then just went back and forth with the net, tried to catch as much detritus as I could. Um, and I worked on this for a good maybe half an hour. So again, I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I just wanted to kind of um, let you see what I was doing and how I kind of did it. Uh, I'm sure there was a better way to do it. But once I got into it, I kind of just wanted to keep going to make sure that at some point or other, I got as much of these, uh, the algae growing and removing the nutrients directly from the tank itself three hours later so here we are a few hours later you can see two-thirds of the way down has been cleaned all of that hair algae that was growing and all those nutrients have been removed from the water so we're gonna keep an eye on this hopefully the catamorpha uh, will continue to grow I'm sure the hair algae will come back but um, eventually the catamorpha as it gets bigger and bigger will outcompete the hair algae and it'll be much easier to take care of in the future so overall I'm very happy with the way everything looks um, I did, uh, as I was kind of cleaning all this up, put some filter socks coming off the drain lines. Uh, you can see I have another 200 pounds of rock there, basically for anaerobic bacteria to collect. Um, I did move the rock that holds the mangrove tree back. The mangrove tree, actually, the leaves were turning a little brown, and a couple of them were actually falling off. So I did make some adjustments there. We'll continue to give you some updates um, as things go forward. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below. If you are not currently subscribed to this channel, there will be lots more updates coming out. So feel free to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, thank you everybody for watching and happy reefing.